Today we're going to talk about my experience at the U.S. Sailing Miami ODP camp from November 20th to November 23rd. If you're new here, my name is Mickey Munns and I make sailing videos. If you're coming back, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new, like the video because it helps the channel out a lot. Um, we're on the road to 200 subscribers uh, and make sure to leave a comment letting me know what you want to see next. Uh, the sailing gear video is coming soon, but I need to recruit a few more buddies to make it more fun. Without any further ado, let's get right into the video. So let's start with some of the obstacles that I faced actually making this camp happen. Uh, winding it back about two weeks before the clinic was supposed to start, um, I had just received an email um, about it and I was scrambling because I needed to get uh, a boat down to Miami. I had been told that all of the boats uh, currently in Miami were chartered um, out to other people already, and so I was gonna need to bring a boat down. Not a problem. Uh, I had been borrowing uh, a 470 from Leandro Spina, who's the ODP director, for about eight months, which was huge for my training. I am so, so grateful that I was able to do that. Um, but he was now asking for me to bring that boat down, um, presumably for me to use it in the clinic. However, since I was sailing against other people, I decided that I was going to need uh, newer equipment that would give me more of a fighting chance, because um, that boat, uh, although I put a lot of work into it and took really good care of it, um, the sails and the hull are just, you know, very well-worn, um, being a 2009 uh, hull year. In contrast, the boats at Oyster Bay um, that Yevgeny had, uh, who is my coach for the Oyster Bay team, uh, were 2015s, I believe, so a whole six years newer, um, and the sails were in a lot better condition, so I figured that would be the best thing to do. So now I had two boats to bring down from New England to Miami um, in two weeks. How was I going to do it? So a few plans I had thought of. I had a two-boat trailer. Um, I was thinking I would maybe just rent a truck and come down, um, but because I'm only 20, uh, I don't really get access to a lot of rental trucks. I had gone on U-Haul, uh, but U-Haul is 79 cents a mile, so that would be a ridiculously high cost. Um, I had thought about maybe renting something with my dad, but unfortunately he couldn't actually make the whole trip, so it would be very dangerous to rent on his uh, driver's license, and if anything happened, we'd be screwed, uh, and the matter of getting the trailer all the way back. So doing it myself wasn't really an option. Uh, I ended up asking Steve Keen to do it. He runs Lysot and he does big shipments of boats down south uh, every single fall. Um, so it made perfect sense and I went and started putting that into action. So weekend one, um, which was two weekends before the clinic was supposed to happen, um, I went and I went to Western Mass, which is where my 420 lives. I have an I-420 for sale, by the way, if anyone would like to buy it, please uh, comment below or send an email to me. My email's in the bio uh, or the description of this video. Um, but yeah, I took my I-420 off of that two-boat trailer. Then we drove it down to Newport, Rhode Island, where my boat was living, um, loaded up with that boat, dropped it in the U.S. sailing office, um, and then, uh, yeah, left the trailer, came back to Boston. Uh, one week later, uh, we went to Newport first thing in the morning to grab the boat. Then we drove it to Oyster Bay, which is about a four or five hour drive, uh, loaded the second boat onto the trailer. Then uh, we took both trailers, another couple hours, um, to Greenwich, Connecticut, where Steve was based out of. Um, and we took our two boats off and put them onto uh, his A-frame trailer. So I ended up getting a small army together because I didn't realize um, that I wouldn't have any help. So I was talking to a bunch of or friends of friends or mutuals that I sort of knew. Um, and so I had uh, like almost six people come out and it was so, so huge. So thank if you were there, thank you so much. You saved my life. It was already dark when we got there. There had been a thunderstorm that day. So we were loading boats in the rain um, earlier in the day, uh, but it was just a little chilly uh, and dark. So saved my life. Uh, after strapping the boats up, um, helping Steve with all the things he needed, uh, that boat was ready to go down to Miami. Um, unfortunately, it was pretty late, so we weren't able to make the trip back to Western Mass that night. We ended up staying in a hotel um, out in the boonies. And then that Sunday the next morning, uh, we drove to 
um, Western Mass to put the uh, I-420 onto the empty trailer. So that chapter is done, my boat's taken care of. Now, all the time, I am trying to find more information about the clinic because I hadn't really received any emails other than me saying, you know, I'm, I'm coming and apparently there's gonna be all these other people. Um, but unfortunately, the Thursday, the day before I was about to leave um, for Miami, so I was leaving Friday the 19th uh, to like unload the boat uh, and go ahead and set everything up. Um, I get a call and it turns out like the clinic is not happening at all for 470s and actually like there's not gonna be a coach and all this stuff and I like I already bought my plane tickets to go down to Miami, my boat's already there. So I was like, you know, F it, let's just go sail. I knew there was gonna be at least one other team, so that's Trevor and Luisa, and then um, my friend Connor um, was trying out sailing with different people. So I figured, okay, like, you know, we'll have three boats, this is sick. Uh, and I also had a great stand-in crew um, lined up, so it was gonna be perfect, right? Um, so I just make the most of the situation, not a big deal. It's four days in uh, Miami, that's pretty cool. You know, we can make some progress. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I'm getting onto the plane uh, 8 a.m. on Friday, and I get a text from the person I'm gonna sail with. Uh, and it turns out she slipped a disc in her back. Um, she didn't know that at the time, she thought it was just a rib injury because she had been having back issues, um, apparently. But um, as, you know, once I landed and then I was like hearing more, I was like, oh shoot, like this is bad. She, not, she might not be able to sail at all. So I'm already in Miami. Um, Steve had asked me if I could get a U-Haul to help haul the A-frame trailer because he had a really big trailer um, that he needed to haul um, and it would speed everything up. So I had already booked a U-Haul um, and I called the U-Haul when I landed and I was like, hey guys, um, I just want to confirm that I'm getting this U-Haul. I'm going to be 15 minutes late because I've had U-Hauls canceled on me before if I was late. And they're like, oh, actually the person before you who is supposed to have had the truck before you isn't turning it in today, so you don't have a truck. And I was like, well, shoot, I just landed. I'm picking up my bag from the baggage claim right now. I put a tow hitch in my carry-on, or sorry, my um, check bag. So this is, you know, freaking me out a little bit. Uh, I get on the phone with U-Haul customer service. I'm like calling them over and over. I'm like, hey guys, I really need a truck. Do you have any other locations? And after, you know, a bit of like tussling on the phone, I finally um, get one set up and I go to that other location. I get an Uber over there and then we're off to the races. So I drive that U-Haul to Miami Yacht Club, which is where um, the Steve's big trailer was getting unloaded and also a bunch of the uh, inflatable coach boats were getting launched. Uh, and I ended up meeting up with a bunch of dudes who were there who were supposed to um, help unload the trailer anyway and we started unloading boats. So I think I unloaded like 13 boats in a couple hours. Um, we were working really hard, um, but you know, I needed to do that before I could get my boat off. I had originally planned on just like, oh, my boat's gonna be there uh, Friday morning and I'll just rig all day, do some boat work, it'll be chill, but ended up doing, uh, you know, heavy, heavy labor. So we did that, we launched two coach boats uh, and I drove those over to the dock and tied them up. Um, and then finally it was time to go to Coconut Grove, which is like a completely different area than Miami Yacht Club, um, to the US Sailing Center to drop uh, the boat off. So we dropped off um, Leandro's boat at the Sailing Center and then we we're bringing uh, Yevgeny's boat or my boat that I'm using currently to um, uh, to the Sailing Center. So we dropped that boat and then we dropped another boat at uh, the Coconut Grove Sailing Club, which was next door. And then we loaded, or we just took the empty trailers and we drove them to um, this guy Marco's house who does storage for the boats uh, about an hour drive away. So it was two hours round trip. Uh, and I ended up um, dropping the U-Haul off and then um, you know I needed somewhere to stay for the night. Um, and the girl who I was sailing with, who again, neither of us knew she was as injured as she was, um, she had, you know, obviously I was going to stay with her. She lived in Tamarack, which is, um, where my grandma used to live, funny enough. Um, but it's in Fort Lauderdale. It's pretty far away. Um, and also Steve had really graciously offered to, uh, reimburse me for the cost of the Uber or sorry for the U-Haul, um, because I was moving Lysot boats, which was really, really helpful. Um, but anyway, I, um, I got the Uber, which was expensive. It was like 50 bucks. Uh, and then I went to Tamarack, went to sleep, and my plan was just, well, I don't, you know, I'm not gonna have a crew for at least a couple days, but maybe she'll do Monday, Tuesday. 
Um, and I, I know there's gonna be just like people who don't have sailing partners hanging out, so I'm gonna recruit somebody and we're gonna go for a sail. Um, I ended up uh, spending a lot of the morning uh, the next day. Uh, also, the girl I was sailing with gave me a ride. Um, so I ended up doing a lot of boat work in the morning and then I did find a guy, uh, this kid Luke and his brother Liam was also there and they were super, super nice dudes from the Great Lakes, 49er sailors, but their boat had been having an issue and so neither of them could sail. So Luke decided, you know, let's go out for sail. That's the, um, the video I sailed with a guy I met in the parking lot. Uh, watch that, it's pretty fun. Um, and then, uh, you know, all in all a good day. Uh, the girl I was sailing with, or planning on sailing with, came to pick me up, uh, but she was just in a lot of pain, and I could tell she was, like, really suffering. Um, but it did mean the world to me that I had transportation to and from the venue uh, and a place to stay. Even though I was spending, like, a ton of money this weekend, or that weekend, um, at least I had a roof over my head, and I was really, really grateful for that because um, I've had some times in the past where I, I haven't had a roof over my head or I've really had to scramble. So that was huge. Um, the next day, I came back to the boat park and again, trying to find somebody to sail with. Uh, I sailed with this kid, um, Aiden Iaconis, who is a beast. And I had like seen him for a while, just like felt like we had known of each other in sailing. Um, he again is like a skiff sailor, but he didn't have a partner to sail with. He had just come down to Miami, kind of like me. Um, and so, you know, we just decided we were going to go sail together. Uh, and the kid is a beast really really good sailor um and we you know had a great time we ended up matching up against the uh, other boat out there this trevor and luisa um and yeah it was uh you know felt really good to be out there and competing uh even if we were getting our our booties kicked um it felt good to compete um then we and again this is only the my i guess my third day in miami but the second day of the camp that was supposed to happen um, so that was great, um, and then the third day, so on the second day, I had met uh, my friend Connor Corgard, who I had kind of known of through us messaging on, online, and he also has a YouTube channel, which you should check out, Coco Coaching, has a lot of good tips. Um, but yeah, we'd sort of known of each other and spoken a little bit on the internet, um, but then we were finally able to meet each other, and he's a crew, he's trying out different skippers, and so we, although 470 is mixed, we had agreed to sail together, uh, again, just so we could get some time on the water. Um, and so the third day I helped him unload his boat, got some friends to help do that. And then we were able to go out and have like a full, full blown training session, um, which felt really, really good. Um, there was supposed to be another boat out there also. Um, just, I forget who the crew was. He apparently was just like really, really good Olympian. And then uh, my friend Peter, uh, Foley was skippering the boat, um, but we didn't find them out there for some reason. Anyway, we got to match up against Trevor and Luisa again, and we were sort of working on our, um, we were doing like downwind pumping, but because I, you know, we hadn't really like planned and like made a solid plan or like these are our priorities, um, it wasn't like a productive training session in terms of like I didn't feel like I was or like really drilling into one skill. But it was really good to be out in the boat and you know hours do help so was happy about that we found that we had like a really nice low pumping mode um while they had a really nice high pumping mode um but you know when we tried to heat it up we would lose some speed um so definitely like our high pumping mode would be something to work on um and then we did a little bit of upwind uh like tacking against each other um and just trying to work on like doing the same tack regardless of if we're like converging with them versus we're like diverging um because when we you know you don't want to do a different tack when you're getting near a boat you just do your best tack no matter what um so we were working on that and i felt like we were making some really good progress and then we finally did like one last tuning run up to the sailing center because the wind was coming from the sailing center um and again like their speed modes as in their like reachier modes or like if you know this is up when this is downwind and this is a reach um whenever they were sailing closer to a reach or like further away from the wind uh upwind or uh higher up on the downwinds they had a really big boat speed edge uh and i just didn't feel like we had that um so again that's something that we need to work on and now i can kind of like make a training plan uh to work those skills 
but yeah, I was super happy to be out there. Um, and it was just like, I felt like I was really uh, training as opposed to just going out and having a good sale. So that was really good uh, and like a good way to make the most of it. But, um, you know, overall coming out of that, up until that day, I had felt very discouraged because it, it was just, you know, just hard to find people uh, to sail with. And, you know, you know, people have other things going on in their life. Sailing is not the, the biggest thing in people's lives. So, I, you know, I felt very alone. Um, even though physically I was not alone, I felt like, you know, I'm just putting in so much effort. Is this really worth it? Really questioning. Um, and I had spoken to some people and, you know, what I had kind of gotten out of it was like, I, I guess, um, like people didn't have a lot of confidence the 470 was going to be like a really viable class going forward. Um, and that like, you know, this is what I've wanted since I started sailing. Like I, I knew I want to sail 470s and I want to try and go to the Olympics since I, I started. Um, so it was really, you know, weird for me to hear like, oh, maybe you shouldn't sail 470s. Oh, like, you know, I, you should give up. Um, and that sucked, but, um, that also kind of lit a fire under me because I felt like, you know, like I'm not used to people telling, well, yeah, I'm not used to people telling me like, like flat out, like you should just like stop doing this. Um, and I also like whenever somebody, uh, says, oh, you can't do this. Like when I was younger, my dad was like, oh, you can't eat this entire pizza. I'm like F you dude, like I'm going to do this. So while I was up until that point feeling like pretty discouraged after having, you know, like speaking to some people, I was like, no, like I'm going to do this. And um, maybe I'm stupid and, you know, just pouring effort into this. Um, but uh, I just, I feel like this is what I'm meant to do and I'm just going to keep, you know, keep going for it. Um, so yeah, um, as for what's currently on the plate, uh, I had just got back from uh, being in California and like spending some time with my mom, which was really, really nice. Um, and you know, sometimes you don't realize how homesick you are until you like go home. You're like, oh wow, I really missed this. So that was great. And I feel so like charged up and just focused, like ready to go to work. Um, so this weekend I'm flying back to California to coach the Skyro Clinic, which is um, like a cool clinic in Southern California. I did it two times uh, growing up and it's like really cool to be like, oh, I was doing this clinic as a kid and now I'm coaching it. Um, and so I really want to help the sailors uh, like work on their self-reliance and just like ability to think critically. Um, so it's more, more than just like giving people knowledge or like pointers. I want to like help them develop their thought processes. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, want to help the athletes out and like give back to the next generation. This is the best way to do it. Um, as for my sailing plans, I'm back with Julia, uh, November 20th to 23rd. So hopefully expect some content, uh, oh, sorry, December 20th to 23rd. So expect some content at that time. And then January is a little weird cause there's a U.S. sailing team camp the first week, but there's also the Rose Bowl regatta, which I'm supposed to do, uh, somewhere around that same time. They may overlap. Um, still trying to figure that out. And then, you know, there's going to be more 470s in Miami. Uh, and there's two regattas, the North American Championship and the uh, Miami Olympic Classes Regatta or the World, World uh, the US Open. Um, so really excited to do those regattas. However, uh, Julia can't uh, go to Miami for like the whole month, uh, which is what I would prefer to do and what I've, I've been doing for a few years now because um, she's starting a real job, which is really exciting. Um, but obviously kind of impedes our ability to um, train, you know, full time against those other boats. So what I'm hoping to do is to bring a boat up to um, Virginia and just go to Virginia and train with her. Um, it's not perfect, but it is training uh, and means we can train, you know, before or after her work, uh, still make progress. And then on the weekends, we can go down and do those regattas. Um, and while having at least one other boat would be fantastic, and I'm, I'm working on that, um, unfortunately, um, or fortunately, I get to sail. That's pretty cool. Um, this is what we're going to do, I think. Um, so what I'm going to need for that is I'm going to need uh, a towing vehicle, either to borrow or a donation to the campaign 
or uh, I, I may just try and flat out buy one. I can't rent one, unfortunately, at least not for that distance. Um, so, and, and I'm just like tired of paying so much money um, to have other people tow my boat. Um, and I know it's also against the direction that people are usually going, but if you guys have any leads on um, finding me some kind of car to tow with, uh, I would really appreciate that. Roof racks would be best because I don't have a trailer down there, but I'm sure I could borrow one if I really need to. Um, and that's just gonna be like super instrumental in getting the boat up to back and forth to Virginia. Um, the other thing is like, I'm pretty low on cash right now. Uh, I'm door dashing, but I'm really only making like 50 bucks a night to be perfectly honest with you. So that's like 250 a week, like it's not nothing, but it's a lot of work for, um, for not a lot of money. So uh, I make a lot more coaching sailing in terms of hourly, um, and it's a lot more efficient with my time. I also enjoy it a lot more. So if you guys know of any sailing gigs where you know someone needs private coaching or event coaching, especially Orange Bowl, I'd really, really, really like to coach Orange Bowl, and I was not able to last year um, just because I, I don't have my own group. Um, so if there's any coaches who you know would allow me to hop on and help coach that regatta, I would really appreciate it. Um, you know, starving sailor here. Um, but yeah, that's basically what we're doing. So although it was a really challenging, um, really challenging couple of days, I'm feeling amped um, and I'm ready to get to work. And I'm just trying to be the best sailor I can be um, and, you know, do the best with what I have. So, you know, no, no reason to think about, you know, what is going wrong because I'm still in a fantastic position to uh, learn a lot this winter and grow as an athlete uh, and share all that with you. So thanks so much for watching. I know this video was a doozy and extremely long. Um, Chartered Sales is fantastic uh, sailing analytics software. So if you haven't checked that out, links in the bio. Um, check out any of my other videos. Um, they're great in my personal opinion. Um, Find me on Instagram, TikTok, um, check out my website, send me an email if you're looking for coaching or just any general questions, uh, mickeymunn at bu.edu, and click the link in the bio to sign up for my newsletter, um, which is uh, coming out basically monthly. Um, make sure to like the video, comment, subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Talk soon, guys. Peace.